We got a highlight today. We have 30k going up against HGC EU LUL as we're continuing with HGC 2024. The Hanzo Genji Cup North America tournament. We're on the NA server, everybody. And 30k, I think they are really the team to beat. Now they're playing with a sub today. Madara is not playing. So they have Big Pex, Mech Flex, aka Fancy Pants playing again, subbing in. Uh, he already subbed for them last week. He subbed for Cure, who couldn't make it. So, uh, same sub, but this time he is replacing a different player. And then on the right side, in red, we got the Europeans, we got Dino's team. Now, they had a very shaky start. So, again, the quick reminder that all of these games are play taking place on the NA server, meaning the two European teams that are participating and have made it into the top six, they play cross-server. So, they all have they all got a struggle with ping disadvantages, with high ping. It plays a role they still are having a bit of a tough time. We've seen initially a lot of plays made where they were centering on uh, macro plays, but right now um, times are a little bit tough here. And 30k is looking absolutely fantastic. I don't think they have dropped a single map just yet. So let's see what these two can do. Unfortunately, no offline environment for a tournament like this. This is a bit of a smaller one, as I said. We have a round robin right now with uh, six teams remaining. And this is going to determine the seeding uh, which, with which we're heading into the final phase of the tournament then. Also, I have a bit bad news. Apparently, the desync of the game sound is back. Now, if you've been watching all of the games here, we had the problem a few weeks back and I solved it actually. Uh, first of all, I don't understand why it crept in in the first place, but I was at some point able to solve it by completely reinstalling and uninstalling everything Heroes related. But apparently it's back, so uh, it doesn't really affect my voice and the, the commentary, but apparently the in-game, so I'm not quite sure. I'm going to blame Blizzard on this one. I have no idea what they've done with their spaghetti code, but this is the same setup that I've been running for five years on this game, and uh, yeah, all of a sudden we're having issues with this. Thankfully, I am getting a new PC soon. My high-tech PC is, I believe, already in the mail. I'm not 100% certain that it's going to be a monster and a beast and that will by default solve things. But yeah, it's weird. It's honestly weird. Anyways, shouldn't distract us too much here. We got Sylvanas, we got Leo, and we got Johanna now as the early picks over um, on the red team side. So yeah, just again... Some people might not even notice, but if you notice it is, I mean, now that I pointed out, you're obviously going to notice it. Um, <laughs> streamer screws himself. Uh, but yeah, so if there is a bit of a, of a disconnect between the in-game sound and what's happening on screen, then uh, just, yeah, we are aware of it. It was fixed initially. It came back. Thanks, Blizzard, I guess. It's clearly game-related somehow. Um, but not really worth making a bit fuzz, big fuzz over because, again, a new PC is going to make the entire setup here new anyways. So, yeah, it is what it is, but sorry for that. Now, for the blue team with Brightwing and Blaze, we get Skewer. Not with Every a pick yet. Zavitul has been banned against him already and so has my F. And this is honestly two of the heroes that I really want to see Cure on. But we see now Varian played, and uh, yep, the NA team, they rediscover their love for Varian, as it seems. Varian, Blaze, and then Brightwing with Hanzo and additional stun. We had essentially the same draft just a series ago from uh, uh, the Anti-Clown Association. It, it was it the same draft, one switch, instead of Brightwing, we had Malfurion. So, uh, yeah, very, very similar drafts here. For the two teams. And talking about drafts, there's no draft rules on this one, so this is really vanilla. Now we have Genji, we got Rega. This is a nice lineup for uh, HTC EU LUL. It would be amazing if they could take 30k down here, but 30k is the favorite for this one. Playing on the home server with no ping problems, an absolute star started lineup here, of course, even with Madara not being able to play today and them having to use this up. But we're going into the Inferno Shrines, our first map in the best of three series, as Cure locks in Carrigan as the final pick. So even more stuns, even more CC. Ladies and gentlemen, map number one, Inferno Shrines. On the left in blue, we got 30k. Cure is playing Carrigan. We got Caterpillar on Varian. Liam on Blaze. Legacy is playing Brightwing. And then Fancy Pants is rocking Hanzo. As over on the right side of the map, we got HGC EU Lul with Hazu on Leoric. We got Lopaka playing Sylvanas right now. And on top of that, Dainu with Genji. So he's going to dive into the back line as best as possible for him. 
And yeah, in addition to that, what we're now getting is Yanzu with Rega, Nagrom and Jojo. So let's see which team is going to take the lead here. And let's see if the Europeans have a chance against 30k over here. Which is basically the uh, NA All-Star team at this point. I think there's a pretty fair description of what we're seeing from uh, the blue team. And they're playing it actually pretty safe. Nobody's moving out. They're absolutely not interested in that early game five-man fight. Just saying, nah, we're going to wait for Taunt. We don't really have any great kill conditions outside of Kerrigan uh, just unleashing it. Pure dropping a combo and then maybe Blaze following up on it. So we're going to play it slow. We want to roam the map. We want to try and flank in, see if we can collapse onto somebody and get the kill that way. But yeah, no interest for them to just go into that mid lane brawl as we oftentimes see. So yeah. Instead, Cure already getting a bit of an assist there. Yep. And Genji, of course, is jumping in. Baits out the combo from Carrigan and is immediately back out. That can also backfire though. So yeah, gotta be careful with this as well. Camps just get taken. Bit of a nibble up at the top against Blaze. Liam is getting drained and is getting taken down to 50% of its HP, but still has the fountain cooldown up, so pops that quickly. And we'll have to be a bit more careful now on the side lane, which is obviously one of the neat things when you are rocking Genji in the first place. He has the mobility that allows you to engage as well, go for that play, and try and apply pressure to the side lane to make it much easier for your own solo laner. Now, the camp gets taken by the European team. Level 4 is coming in very, very soon, and then Caterpillar can tee up Carrigan combos with Khan. Which is exactly what we're gonna see soon. Europeans are slightly faster. The peasants are in. Yeah, now it's playtime. Off we go. Caterpillar already looking for Dino, and Dino's having none of it. He's like, no. Thank you. I know that guy. He has bad breath. Varian apparently never uses a toothbrush. So, yeah, he just jumps out. He's like, no, 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 no. No taunt from you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So they go for the camps. First objective is going to be announced in five seconds, and then we're going to see the battle unfold over our first shrine, which is at the bottom of the map. So they're all going to make a move for that. Yeah, and let's see how much they can do here. So at this point, oh, Liam with the pause. Oh, Q apparently disconnecting. Q disconnecting from the game as everybody at the top is just going for the cam. Dino is just saying hello, but yep, we're going to wait for Q to come back, and uh, the timing is perfect. I mean, honestly, better now than in the middle of the Shrine fight. So let's see what happens when Q is back and who takes the first Punisher here. But as far as disconnects go, at least this one happens at a pretty convenient time for the game. All right, then we're back to business. So this one took a little bit longer. You see, this is the advantage when you watch those games on YouTube because you don't have to deal with all of these breaks. Q apparently lost his internet connection and it took him quite some time in order to get it back. So I'm not quite sure what's going on in Texas right now, but yeah, internet is back to business. I'm not 100% certain if he's on his main connection. He wanted to restart his, his router and see if that solves the problem. Uh, but he also said that he has a hotspot that he can fall back on to if need be. So I'm not quite sure what exactly he's using right now. But our first fight is happening. There's the taunt, the follow-up. And Azu is still alive. Doesn't go fully orky just yet. But again, if you want someone to die, then it's definitely him. And they're unleashing everything they have on Leo. And Leo goes down. So nicely done. Okay, first kill for 30k. They unleash the combo. Varian is doing Varian things. Ooh, and Dino had to jump out too. So all the players were definitely entertaining themselves with a little bit of a trash talk during all of this. Now as they're heading into the first objective, it seems like it's going to be 30k that walks away with Punisher number one. The Europeans are trying to close the gap. Blaze is now coming into four versus five. Maybe at least a kill. And yep, we get Brightwing. Brightwing gets destroyed. Okay. Carrigan too, so Cure is now down, but the Frozen Punisher has been taken. Liam moved in and said, you know what, boys, we might lose the fight, but we're going to win the war, or at least the objective. So they got a Punisher, Frozen Punisher at that, but two heroes are down. They had the jump proc in front of the gate. Eh, kind of not what you really want there, but they got a number. This is a weird defense. It's a very, very weird defense, if you ask me. 
So they're baiting it over. Essentially, that well, now they're losing Jojo, Nagrom. What's happening here? Usually the French are really good at running away, but in this case, Nagrom gets caught and killed. So the fort still stands. The wall is lost, I guess. Is that a win? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, either way, uh, the jump crocked in front of the wall this time, but essentially they didn't lose a fort, they didn't lose any hit points on the fort, so I guess it's fine. Well, still a bit of an awkward one if you ask me. This could have definitely been handled better by the European team, but the fact alone that they were able to get all those kills was already kind of nice. So now we have pressure applied at the top as they're trying to repay the DNA boys in kind. Caterpillar is already looking for Dainu but has to settle for Hazu. So uh, this is Leo getting attacked, dodging the combo from Carrigan, but he might still not make it. QR is just jumping around like a bunny on speed and nearly got the kill there. So Hazu is able to move out. He has level 10 for the Europeans. They still have a small leading experience, nothing to write home about. Lopaka jumps out. And of course, by now we have heroics for both teams. So everybody is starting to slowly now set up for all of it. Uh, Caterpillar still there, also with another potential attack that he can set up. Alright, let's see how far we're going on this one. I mean, right now we got Tarox for both, two kills for each side. Second objective, not announced yet, but the uh, continuous pressure applied thanks to Sylvanas at the top lane as they're hoping to take this one on. So not quite there yet, but they're nibbling. Hey, when we're talking about just general plays throughout the round robin so far, 30k, as I said before, hasn't lost a single map yet. So the Europeans are currently trying to facilitate that and uh, drop them and also make him lose the series. Nice ancestral arrow. Ah, the entomb bunker. Everything gets dropped immediately and damn, full on barrage here as they're going for Q again. Carrigan was looking for the combo and couldn't quite get it. Genji is now just barely moving out. Both of the teams insanely low as the fight continues here, but it's the Europeans that have to half. And at least a few of them. The rest is just tapping the fountain real quickly which might become a problem for the next objective, which is, by the way, spawning in the middle of the map. So over here, uh, still making a couple of plays. Yep, Shrine activating now all the way up at the, uh, uh, the mid lane as the camps are claimed. So they're starting to now come in and uh, take the Shaman camps with level 13 being the next talent for both of the team here. So they have a chance to maybe at the top lane if they keep Leo up. There's no, there's no real globals. There's, there's Brightwing, but if you are pushing at the top lane, you definitely have a bit of an opportunity to try and take the opponent's camp out and then use your own to get structural damage done. But of course, you also want now that we're moving into objective number two, to really focus on getting the Punisher here and trying to take that on. So this is what we're seeing from uh, both teams with the Europeans taking the initial lead on the Shrine minions. Blaze at the top trying to defend. Opens up opportunities here in the middle. As they're starting to make the next move. Yeah, 25. Getting a lot of those stacks. Looking good right now for HGC Yulul. This is looking pretty promising. And yeah, can they get a bit more on this one? Hazo now starting to move in and he claims the border punisher for them. The weakest one out of the bunch at the end of the day, but still of course quite nice. They're pushing with Sylvanas at the top. Punisher in the middle, and then they have Jojo down at the bottom of the map. In two, not too bad, but nice escape by Cattle as he just dashes out here. 13 talents on both sides, and the push here is quite nice. The problem is nobody's really pushing in the middle of the map. The wall gets destroyed by the Punisher regardless, and now that they're moving over, they might be able to do a bit more damage. Bless shield, Punisher jump comes in too. They try for cure, can't get the kill. Focus shift onto Caterpillar, but it's Sylvanas that falls. She's the first one to get destroyed, and they might lose more. Nagrom is also low. Gets slowed by Varian, and there's the kill. Gets Hanzo towards the end, so two kills coming in for the NA team. They lost the fort, so the first outer structure gets destroyed on the blue team side, but it comes as a surprise as the Europeans are losing two of their heroes in this encounter. So, yeah, the trade here. Worth it or not? That's of course the question. But right now, next move already happening at the top lane as Hazo continues pushing. Continues to try and make some plays here for the team. 
And down at the bottom of the map, there's a couple of camps that are currently being claimed. So they're going to try and take those for now. Mm, yep. And a couple more attacks also still coming through the bot lane for that fort. They want it. They have the camp. They pushed in with the rest of the team too, but they can't take it out yet. So no catapults for the NA team yet. In experience, they have a tight lead now, so they have actually pulled ahead a bit. That could result in an early level 16. I don't think that they can do anything with it yet. But down at the bottom of the map now, all right. Hanzo's moving in again. We got Cure making his little play also for the next camp. So if you're looking at the minimap alone, they are painting it blue. They have taken all three of the bottom camps. Now the only one that the European team was able to claim is their own Shaman camp topside. Right wing just trying to slow Sylvanas down. It's always these counter push plays that we're getting from Lopaka now as he's starting to make some moves. Ooh, Arrow connects with two. Nice. Jet propulsion. That's the end of Sylvanas. Beautifully executed. Nicely done. 30k is coming in and just drops them all. Arrow was the first one, then Liam with the jet propulsion, and that gave Caterpillar enough time to rotate over from the middle, get the taunt in, and it's the end of Silvana. So kill number 5 for 30k at the bottom of the map. Liam now taking the opportunity to go for the fort, and they should be able to claim this. With everyone else on the team now also jumping in on it, they can take that one out, and that gives them a bit more presence on the map now too. So each team has just destroyed one fort, but the European team is trying to follow up on this. The problem that they have is that the rotation is already coming their way. And while Nagrom is sniffing it out, they might not be able to save all of them. Leo still about to get caught. Dino trying to get his cooldown back. He's wasting some time. Plays with vision and gets taunted mid... Oh, my damn. Mid-dash. Very and strong. But they are escaping. So they did damage at the top side four. Didn't quite manage to take it down. And now Lopaka at the bottom after de pushing the lane is joining up with the rest of the team. So the Europeans are actually doing fairly okay when it comes to just staying on target. We have 24,000 damage now from Genji, 33,000 from Hanzo. So his brother just doing a bit better here. But still, very interesting situation that we find ourselves in now because technically you win a fight, the Europeans could take it. Arrow, there's the stun combo, and then A, they take her down again. Rega's also dead. Damn, 30k is cleaning house here. Going through HTC, you look like hot butter through cheese. Taking them down one hero at a time in that crucial fight. Sylvanas the first one to fall. Rega with an ancestral attempt that didn't go through, so he died as well. And that leaves him, of course, full on in the driver's seat here as they have a 5 kill lead now, and they shut them down immediately. The Europeans, no opportunity here to win that fight. Insta loss for them. Leo at least taking out the top side forward, so they are still pushing for structures and attempting to make a few additional plays here. But it's it's tough for them now. Oh, especially if Hazano dies too. Liam wants the kill and gets dangerously close to actually grabbing it. But with Varian moving in, Leo might still fall. Because Caterpillar realized that too. Yeah. They, oh, they missed him. They missed him. Didn't have vision on Leoric. Oh, that could have been the end of him. It would have been the end of him. If they knew where he was, he would have died right there. They could have interrupted the hearth and then take him out. 39 minion stacks against zero. So they're just trying to force it here. What 30k is attempting to do is to slow it down and prolong the suffering by getting to level 20 plus a Punisher push. They can't quite make that work because the Europeans I mean, realized what was happening and immediately then went in to force their hand. Now we got Leoric still destroyed and uh, thanks to that added experience they might still get level 20. So this is looking really, really good. That push with level 20, losing a keep here would be kind of what's to be expected. So they're going to push hard for this, so they should, and we'll see how much damage they can do. Because with level 20, if they just pick up a couple of kills on top of this now as well, they could go a lot further than only taking a keep down. I mean, technically, they could also succeed in, uh, in taking the game. If they are just able to do, uh, yeah, exactly that. Take Leo down first, follow up with a few additional kills, work around the cooldown on Varian's taunt. Dino's now jumping in, baiting the 
Punisher once again, but they are already posturing around the core, and so they should. They have Storm Talents, they want to go for another kill, Ancestral comes out in time, but Varian still has a taunt, uses it against Genji. The combo against Dainu, and he is gone. Quest completed for Johanna. Might be a bit too late. That's Rega. He's gone. So Sylvanas. Everybody got destroyed. Five man team wipe. As 30k gets the victory in game number one. They take the lead in the best of three series here against HGC EU Lull. And for good measure, they take down Leoric once again. Leorki died four times all in all. They have 14 kills to two. And that is the lead after victory on Inferno Shrines for the blue team. GG. And nicely done. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, we're heading to Sky Temple, ladies and gentlemen. And well, so far 30k is still undefeated and you could clearly tell why. Now, the caveat is obviously this is unfortunately not an offline environment. We're still playing cross-server, the Europeans with a disadvantage there. If you actually want to see Offline games between Europe and North America and throwing Korea for good measure. We had an amazing tournament just last year in Berlin where we had teams from all regions play against each other. And if that doesn't ring a bell immediately upon hearing that, then you are in a very weird spot because on the one hand you really missed out. On the other hand, it's a huge plus for you because you can still watch all of these games and they're incredible. So I'm a little bit jealous that you get to experience that. So check out the playlist Nations Cup on my YouTube channel. You can jump into the playlists there. There's one that's called Nations Cup, and it is, it was one of the best offline events in Heroes of the Storm in forever. Absolutely ridiculous. Great audience, we had multiple caster teams. We had uh, teams, international teams on site. And again, if this doesn't ring a bell for you, then you are in luck because you are in for a really, really amazing tournament there. You should definitely check it out. If you watch nothing else, watch the grand final. You're gonna love it. You can thank me later. But I would highly recommend that you watch the entire playoffs. So yeah, it was absolutely insane. So now with that, we have on the left side, uh, the bands on Sylvanas and on the Vikings, which is actually sad. I mean, I wanna see Vikings. The more Vikings, the better. Always good. Now we have on top of that, Hogger band out and Lucio. So a bit of Overwatch gets eliminated. And then uh, the Brightwing first pick. Now with Sky Temple, I still want to see some absolute cancer comms like give me that Samuro and uh, Abathur play for example. We've had that a few times, but so yeah. Blaze, Anubarak, old school comp, very powerful too. And yeah, that gives us our next double pick. I would still assume that they're also swapping heroes around a little bit. Caterpillar now locking in Brightwing. I highly doubt that he is actually going to play it here. Um, so I assume this is going to get changed. Legacy on Diablo, that would be a sight to see. So the swaps are incoming. And we have Fancy Pants, at least for now, showing Hanzo. All right, a bit more of a dive comp now for HTC EU Lul for the European team. But give me some of the weird ones. Throw me, a, throw me a curveball or something here. Would absolutely love that. Talk about things that I love, guys. If you are watching anime and we talk every now and then about a couple of shows here, check out Kaiju Number Eight, the tenth episode. I must have watched the uh, moment where they realize something's wrong at least ten times. Fantastic story, really good. So if you if you are currently a little bit disillusioned with all of the trash that is coming out of Hollywood in particular and you don't have a problem with the anime, I would highly recommend that you are checking out Kaiju Number 8. Really nice series and you're not going to regret it if you are uh, okay with anime in the first place, obviously. But yeah, really, really nice job. Now, we have really nice games here too, but who's going to claim it? Okay, Greyman gets banned. Falsa gets banned. I still want to see that curveball play. Karazim for a seven-sided. All right. And there's Tychus. Karazim, Tychus. I mean, Sky Temple usually centers around a fight at the boss. Eventually. Something you could do here. And now the final two picks for the blue team who still wants to maintain their perfect record. Can they? 
2 0 victory would, of course, go a long way. They're firmly established in the number one position right now. Oof, in the round robin standings. Here comes Urel together with Diablo. Always a nice one. And then we get Hua on my F. Which is already rough. That leaves us with Dainu. So, what is Dainu gonna do? Are we gonna see some Zagara plays on Sky Temple now instead of Dragonshire? Or just straight up damage from him and then them trying to force these fights and go for it? Well, come on, boys. Final pick on Sky Temple, map number two, and it is Jaina. So we got our burst damage off to the races. Can the Europeans bring it back? Is 30k shutting them down here? Let's find out together. Game on, 30k with the lead in the best of three. HTC EU lull over on the right with, ah oh well, the attempt to win two in a row now. We got Legacy on the left for 30k with Brightwing. They swap the heroes around. Shocking, I know. Liam on Urel. We get Fancy Pants on Hanzo, Caterpillar on Diablo, and Cure is playing Mayev, which in and of itself already tells you that this is going to be fire. On the right, Hazops with Blaze. We got Lopaka on Tykes, Nagrom on Anubarak, Dainu on Jaina, and Karazim gets played by Yazu. So, full on magic carpet for this one. And yeah, Caterpillar all the way up to the top with Hazorps already taking uh, to the pleb horse here. They're still trying to push at the bottom of the map a bit. The idea is obviously the same as if you're using Sylvanas. You're just trying to spawn a couple of beetles in an attempt to soak up some tower shots and then you just move in. And every single time that I talk about this, it makes me sad that we don't have tower ammunition anymore. I think it would have been really nice for Blizzard to just fix uh, the tower ammunition issue a little bit differently. Uh, as a solo lane, I'd always... Fa I, I, I don't know. I thought tower ammunition was pretty cool. Could have changed the mechanic a bit, removing it completely. It's kind of sad. But I guess they wanted to dumb it down a little bit more. Which is actually kind of sad when you think about it. Like, they did a lot with the experienced globes that they already brought it in so that even the last dummy realizes Urgh, experience should pick it up. Um, making uh, the entire rotational place faster, like speeding the game up or the, the movement speed so that it, made, it was easier for people to rotate between lanes too. I would have see, liked to see some of those changes still happening during the times of HTC to see how the pros reacted. But just generally speaking, they made the game even easier. So... Then again, we now have Legion of Beetles in, and this one, still plenty to do here. Down at the bottom of the map, Dino sitting tight on Jaina, and trying to also, of course, do his thing, maybe burn down the opponent's siege shines whenever he gets an opportunity to do that. Whereas the camps are now slowly starting to play. There's a little bit of a slow start into this one. Everybody is playing it cool, calm, collected. Nobody is moving out too heavily. Everybody's just like, all right, let's take this slow and see what we can do in order to get ahead. And also, at the bottom, the first fight, Dino's actually getting bullied. Yep, and he goes down. They put him into a corner here, and Caterpillar just soaking up a lot of the shots, and Jaina's the first one to fall, so Dino gets eliminated. And they still maintain the one Siege Giant, so that's already damage against the bottom tower. But here comes the grenade to the face, and Hanzo cosplays Bruno Mars and goes down. Caught the grenade with his face, and it didn't quite improve his looks there either. So, yep, he's gone, and that's that. Hanzo can stick that bow where the sun doesn't shine. At least the arrow. Now we have a kill for a kill. And we have, in the rhythm, four Tykers. Okay. Drill incoming, Kappa. But yeah, Liam. <laughs> they wanted to jump on him, but Urel is just simply moving out. No problem whatsoever. Now the wall's done! And Nagrom is dead. Caterpillar, big play from him. Dropping Anubarak like a hot potato. And that is kill number two for the blue team. As they can now start to take their temple shots in the middle. And even have Q at the top trying to harass the red team a little bit further. See if they can maybe steal some of these shots away. Dino is the only one sitting here in the middle and can't really do anything about that, so that wall is going to fall very quickly. Urel still at the bottom of the map, trying to make her own move here. But they are, they are poking at the top against Hazu, against Yazu. And Nagrom is jumping in again, but they just can't set up these kill opportunities. They are hoping, of course, to follow up with Jaina on this. 
but it's not really working for them. Instead, what we're seeing is Diablo getting all of the shots fired in the middle, severely damaging the mid lane fort, and extra experience coming in through Liam at the bottom of the map because they are getting a lot done here. And up at the top, another play. Cure gets a helping hand from Brightwing. Legacy might be in trouble though as a result. Nope, it's Hazo that dies. Hazo is gone. And that is kill number three. So once again, it is 30k that is doing work here. But at least the counter kill. At least that happens. They get the counter kill against my F. Still with Ural now coming in. Oh, Ural jumping over. And then Yazu with Karazim just barely dashing out there towards the end. That got nasty. So, also, by the way, the question keeps coming up time and time again. And I see this all the time. This is the only talent that matters on Karazim. Iron Fists. There's still people, even in 2024, that are surprised by that choice. So even on a solo support Karazim, this is the only talent that at the end of the day you want to take here. So if you're picking anything else, you're kind of doing it wrong. So uh, you want to learn to play around that. So Karazim in this case, again, with the standard. I'm a little bit excited to see what exactly Tigers is going to do as all of this continues. 17 stacks right now. Doesn't really scream Hall of Fame, but hey, if he is able to get good damage out against Diablo in particular as the game continues with his minigun, then so be it. So. I'm gonna keep our eye on that and see how far he can go. Now, down to the bottom of the map. I was still trying to get some extra damage against the wall and obviously also a bit more experience against all of these minions that we have here. Level 10 will soon kick in and that fight could not come at a worse moment for the European team. There's the heroic abilities. Jaina isn't here. Barbecue play already done. Arrow and bye bye. That's two of them immediately down. Annihilated. And we say bye-bye. So, bye. yeah. Not really a great look for them. Even another kill then against Tigers towards the end. The timing, again, absolutely atrocious. Dainu, he gets caught too. He's not going to make it. Gets wall stunned and destroyed. But, yes, those are rogue abilities. They kicked in just as the perfect moment in time. Once they saw that the fight was being forced, they should have probably just retreated here. It would have been different with both teams not having heroics, but this was just nasty. I mean, yeah. Boss gets taken as a result too. Still no level 10 for the European team. Now they have it after they lose the fight. Lose five heroes. Oh, sorry, it was four. Lose the boss. And obviously the temple at the bottom of the map is now activating soon too. But this bottom fort is likely going to be lost. The one in the middle has already been destroyed. Things couldn't be any better for the blue team now. I mean, they're absolutely crushing this. This is one of those fights that can ruin your entire game where you're just looking at it and you're thinking, okay, GG, go next. But the problem is they can't go next. This is the last game if they lose it, or the last map in the series if they lose it. So they gotta try and fight back here, but it is going to be more than an uphill battle. That was just insanely bad for the red team. Insanely bad. Couldn't have been worse. That level 10 timing for 30k was perfect. Absolutely perfect. So right now, the bottom fort is gone. The one in the middle is also destroyed. The URL is still at the top. A couple of the shots are being given up. They know that they're more than one and a half levels ahead. The Europeans are fighting nicely here, but I also like the way that uh, 30k is just playing this without any need to rush things. They're still doing the best they can. You just force them back here. They're like, all right, let's, let's play this. URL wants to get level 13 for them and will grab it. So they're just playing around the advantages as best they can. Totally willing to give up a couple of shots on the altar or the shrine at the bottom of the map. The temple. Yeah, Ural, totally fine here at the top. And now they can rotate over. The shots at least get fired. But the fort hasn't been destroyed either. So still looking very strong here. More than a level ahead. The talent lead is there. 30k is in the driver's seat. If on Sky Temple you start pulling ahead on structures this heavily, then you know things are going well for you. Just simply because you are... I mean, again, you are in a spot where if you're not just exchanging temples with your opponent, you will eventually win the game, and you know it too. Stun is missing, so Caterpillar kind of juking them out. Arrow connects with Jaina. The disc as a follow-up. Cocoon gets used against Cure. They're still trying to force it here. Seven-sided strike, and Dainu is gone. Dainu pulls a Houdini and disappears. Now they go for Tykes. He's destroyed as well. Yep, StarCraft characters apparently also having a rough time as the second kill comes in against Blaze. 
So the fire bat gets removed and that... That's tough! Now the forts are getting destroyed. Uh, sorry, the, the siege giants, forts too. That's what Urel is doing at the top lane now. But we are gonna have four siege giants at the bottom of the map and then trying to open up the wall. And as per usual agreement, if on Sky Temple you're able to take out some structures by pure force without using your objective, every single temple that you take from there on out is gonna work massively in your favor. And that's what we're seeing now. Urel proxying the wave at the top, putting more pressure onto the structures right here. Also getting the experience for the team, who's now closing in on level 16, and they're essentially running a three level lead here. If you want to quibble, it's two and a half, but the result is the same. They are heavily ahead. And yeah. 36 stacks for Tigers on his level four. <laughs> Jaina's not even done with their baseline yet either. Which means that obviously they are having a problem here too. Because what that means is that she just can't ice block anything. So also in trouble. But with level 16 talents, how do you fight this? And the answer is you usually don't. Bright ring at the bottom of the map. Disc and arrow from the same target. Probably not the best move here. But I don't think it's going to matter too much. Lopaka gets tethered in and killed. Yep, that's one kill, two kills. Urel alive. They go for the triple baby. They go for four. And the Europeans are absolutely getting farmed here. 30k is dropping them. Melting them away like hot butter and cheese. 14 kills to 2 now. And it is an utter nightmare for the red team. I do not see a way for them to get back into the game. It's a double altar that they, or double temple that they can now get. The first keeps are likely going to fall here. In addition to that, we have 30 seconds on the boss. So that's a problem too. They can just follow up on that and then push more through the bot lane. I think the keep might survive. No, maybe not. He might just survive. I think it's gonna stay. I think the keep is actually... Ooh, it's, yeah, it's close. It's really close, but it survives. Spoiler alert though, the one at the bottom of the map. Likely not. So yeah, this one is gonna fall. First keep is gone. Not a single fort has been destroyed on the blue team side. This one at the top is the closest they came thus far. Tigers with 20,000 damage. I know you're shocked that the boss is being taken, but again, already called. They're going for a Hail Mary maybe. Even without the level 16 talents, I think they're going to go in first. So, yeah. So they're starting to make a move right there on this one. And they might know. Caterpillar is jumping in and is trying to get it. Yeah, arrow is missing. Seven-sided strike. Diablo with the play. They might lose that boss. They're losing it. Urel down. Diablo is down too. So two have been eliminated. And that is three heroes down plus a boss claim. Yeah, come back, baby. This is one way to get back into the game. The arrow missing, not connecting. Nobody helping Diablo as he went for the play. Dino is now being caught off guard a bit, but he has his best completed. So he gets his ice block out. Diablo has no soul. Well, he has 25, but that bottom fort is gone. Brightwing is destroyed, and they're killing more and more. At least, at least Dino has also been killed. So, yeah, counter kill by 30k. Caterpillar, once more, gets stunned before he can unleash another pressure play. And Caterpillar gets seven-sided and goes down. But so does Tychus. Fancy Pants gets the kill here. Down here, Siege Giants and Catapult on the core. They got some counter pressure. They're still a level behind, but two forts have now been destroyed. The one on the top has also been eliminated. The situation is still really shitty for uh, HTC EU Lul. And there's very little to get on the map. Ugh, and now Blaze, Hazu, he gets killed. So, yeah, tough times. Now Cure is back in game. Brightwing is coming back. Diablo is on his way too. But they are, I mean, the gap is still too big. Level 20 soon. Temple activating in 8. Blaze down for 26. The shots will be fired towards the middle. It's not going to take the keep down. But it is, of course, severely going to damage them. Nagrom again aiming for Urel. Apparently, he likes some goat meat here. Couldn't get any, though. Are they willing to fight here again? They might be willing to force a fight because there's no level 20 yet. So, before the Storm Talents are in, I suppose this is a chance that you could technically take. Try and just go for a big one. 
So, yeah. But either way. With that now, we're having 17-2-7 uh, on the kill count. Level 20 talents are in. And one and a half levels for European team to close. So, yeah, it's a bit rough. And Brightwing, they're actually getting the keep in the middle after all. Damn. Yep, they're getting it. They're getting both keeps. All of the keeps are getting destroyed. Whew. Yeah. Now, now you're really... Uh, I mean, they are put into a corner here. Keep is gonna fall, and good luck trying to bring this back. The only way for 30k to lose this is if they are getting murdered in a team fight, lose essentially every single hero, and yeah. But I just don't see it happen. Nice disc after the tether. Now the chance to try and go for Karazim. Barbecue, and he survives. Yaz is actually alive. But has to also head out of the fight. There's a big wave at the bottom of the map building up at the bot lane. Including catapults and siege giants. The siege giants are getting blocked even by the catapults. That's how many we have right now. So, yeah. We're starting to take that out too. And then in the meantime, with level 20 talents in their hands still and that big lead, they're just going for it. And now it's more or less a checkmate position because you can either push onto the core, you can go for the temples. No matter what you do here, your opponent is going to be seriously threatened to lose the game. And I don't know how the European team is supposed to come back into this. I don't think they can. They would have to win a team fight really, really big time, and I just don't see it. I also don't even know if the blue team is willing to give them a fight, even with a level 20 advantage, because they can simply play around them. They take the camps, they now have also on top of that the temples that they can take too. So, yeah, entire map is essentially painted blue with the exception of this camp down here, and they're going to claim this one as well in another couple of seconds. Now the Europeans, they're, they're grabbing level 20, so that's the good news. At least they're getting level 20. But the entire map, with the exception of the boss, is going to be painted blue in a moment. And there's a double temple activating. So once that you apply pressure at the bottom of the map with siege giants and catapults, you just have to go for the temples. And even if the fight is prolonged and just like drawn out, your bot lane is going to give you value. So essentially, it's a checkmate position. HCC Yulul needs a quick kill. Several quick kills. Maybe that one! Caterpillar, arrow is out, Brightwing is helping, and they get away. Alright, so they're getting out. Lots of cooldowns burned in that last encounter. Time is working in favor of the blue team, and Liam is at the top, and is slowly starting to take the shield down. So Urel has to be careful, but they're pushing into the middle now as well. And there's the kill. Blaze is gone. No bunker for Hazu. Gets murdered before he can even react to it. The core is already losing hit points, and this is gonna be it. Nicely done by 30k. They are the favorites here. They're still undefeated. They did the 2-0 victory. Urel is firing away, and that is game. 2-0 for 30k against HGC U Lul as they win Sky Temple. GG. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.